I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we explore homes as varied as they are memorable. We're at a Midtown penthouse with 360 degree views. And we're in Westchester at one of the most unique homes you'll ever see. We visit Princeton for a special tour of the magnificent Governor's Mansion with the First Lady of New Jersey. Plus, designer PJ Steffen shows off a unique Art Deco influenced property in West Soho. But first, a look inside a massive designer loft filled with surprises both inside and out. Truly my favorite I've ever seen in the city, and I'm not just saying that. Welcome to Open House NYC. Right now I'm coming to you from this regal loft in the heart of Tribeca. Located in the kind of classic cast iron building for which this neighborhood is famous, this bright and airy residence has soaring 12 and a half foot ceilings and oversized windows along with original columns that give it a timeless feel. The open plan entertaining space flows effortlessly from the inviting living and dining areas to the modern kitchen with its dual islands and luxurious finishes. The master suite has every conceivable indulgence and it's one of four bedrooms in this nearly 4,000 square foot home. We are getting started by sticking with the loft vibe but moving things just a bit north into Soho. You are not going to believe the sheer scale of this designer dream home. The great room alone with its dual fireplaces is a showstopper but the show definitely doesn't stop there. It's approximately 8,000 square feet and filled with bespoke detail over each of its four levels, inside and out. See for yourself. I'm Noble Black with Douglas Solomon Real Estate. Welcome to the penthouse at 421 Broom Street, right in the heart of Soho. This 8,000 square foot triplex penthouse has been totally reimagined and is unlike anything else you've ever seen in the city. Come with me and I'll show you why. So this home has four bedrooms, seven bathrooms, and one of the things that makes it so unique are the architectural details. They may look like they've been here for over a century, but everything is actually brand new. It's truly a loving homage to the best of old Soho. And those architectural details can be seen right here in this great room, from the six oversized arched windows to the full brick facade, two fireplaces, two huge 10 by 10 skylights, and the beautiful wide plank oak floors that run throughout the home. So this great room is divided into several distinct areas. So you've got a beautiful oversized living space here. There's a separate dining area behind me and then a separate billiards area for games. This great room is grand enough. You could entertain a couple of hundred people, but it's also intimate enough. You could have a beautiful evening at home with your family in front of the fire. And if you're an art collector, there's certainly no shortage of wall space. Now follow me to the kitchen. So the way I always describe this kitchen is like something out of an English manor house. It has everything. 20 foot barrel vaulted ceiling, beautiful fireplace, marble floors, granite countertops, three butler's pantries, 86 inch range. It has everything. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of the most fun aspects of this kitchen is the custom cabinetry. It's 18 feet high and you get to use this fun ladder to reach everything. You'll never run out of storage space. The rest of this floor includes two additional bedrooms and a beautiful library. But let me show you where you're gonna start and end each of your days here. So the master suite encompasses the entire second floor of this home and it's among the biggest I've ever seen in the city. It's also a true dream filled with luxurious touches from the silk wall coverings and silk carpets to the fireplace with ornate marble mantle and private outdoor terrace. And the bathrooms are truly my favorite I've ever seen in the city, and I'm not just saying that. You've got marble that fully clads both bathrooms, beautiful millwork, a solid marble bathtub, a private terrace, and a dressing room straight out of a fashion magazine. And after you're dressed to the nines, let me show you the perfect place to host a party. So welcome to the third floor of the penthouse. And a home filled with beautiful entertaining spaces, and this is the pinnacle, both literally and figuratively. You've got another dining room with beautiful barrel vaulted ceilings, another kitchen, continuation of the hardwood floors that run throughout the home, and another living space, plus three terraces with views to the World Trade to the south, the police building to the east, and over all of Soho to the north. You know what, it's a beautiful day. Let's take a look at those views. So 
So this is my favorite of the terraces, and the reason why is this is truly an outdoor space that you can use all year round. You've got a fireplace, overhead heating, and a grill. Just one more thing that makes this home so unique and special. I'm so happy I was able to show you around today. Thank you for joining me on the tour. That home really combined the best of both loft and townhouse living, and that great room had a scale worthy of a museum, didn't it? Coming back to the break, we are sticking around Soho with designer PJ Steffen. We'll see you in just a bit. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're in West Soho at a recently completed townhouse project with interiors by designer PJ Steffen. PJ used an art deco inspired aesthetic with a focus on geometric patterns and curved details. The result is a home that constantly surprises. I'm PJ Steffen, principal of Steffen Design Studio. Welcome to West Soho. I'm extremely excited to present one of our latest projects to you, one of the most exquisite properties in downtown New York. Built in 1910, we gutted the entire building to construct our client's ideal living space, which was influenced by Art Deco design. We designed a sleek update that achieves a modern take on this classic design era. Let's check it out. In my designs, I love to wow people as they enter a space. So we assembled a sophisticated pattern plate to make a grand impression on the way to the elevator. The custom fabricated steel and glass partitions, the bronze trimmed paneled walls, and the cut slab stone flooring were designed to be elegantly playful and to introduce the aesthetic of the rest of the home. Even though the elevator is a transitional space, I took the opportunity to make it a room using the same materials I use throughout the rest of the home. The parlor level is a multi-use space where the family can both relax and entertain. This floor is effortlessly divided into a sitting room, a media room, and a formal bar where guests can sit back with a stylish cocktail. What I like most about this space is the walnut bar. We incorporated channeled leather panels with an antique mirror back bar to create a chic boutique hotel feel. The double height window provides beautiful light and combines the parlor level with the third floor dining mezzanine and has the perfect place for a piano. Who wouldn't be impressed? On the third floor, our design story continues in the kitchen and dining spaces, where the same bronze trims, architectural steel, elegant stone surfaces, and Versailles parquet floors establish our 1920 chic backdrop. Here, antiques and artworks sourced from galleries in Paris are on display, namely this exquisite tiered crystal chandelier. I really love the view from the mezzanine looking out this double height window. I wanted the space to be comfortable for the family, and the modern kitchen juxtaposed with the Art Deco details is a perfect representation of my style. The home has four distinct bedrooms, each with high-end textiles and materials. And the entire sixth floor has been reserved for the master suite. I worked closely with the clients to provide a fashionable yet effective space for everyday living. Beautiful jacquard start carpeting and frette de couture textiles provide fashion, where thoughtfully planned built-ins provide function. Automated custom drapery is programmed to open and close upon schedule, and a recessed Hollywood makeup mirror is seamlessly integrated into their daily routine. The custom master closet also has a channeled glass wall, and the floor-to-ceiling stone in the master bath gives it a spa-like feel. But if you want to go to an actual spa, you should check out the hammam in the basement. I really love giving a modern spin to Art Deco design, and this is one of my sexiest projects. I'm very happy you had a chance to take a look. I love how PJ gave a modern twist to the Art Deco aesthetic. Coming up after the break, a special tour of one of the more stately and historical homes in the Garden State. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Open House NYC. New Jersey is known for many things. It's bucolic landscape for one. I mean, it's called the Garden State for a reason. It also has vibrant cities, world-class universities, and yes, beautiful homes, many of which we feature on this show. Now we're in Princeton to check out what might be the grandest of them all, Drumthwacket, also known as the Governor's Mansion. New Jersey's own First Lady, Tammy Murphy, gives us a tour and explains what makes the home so special, from its history to its stunning decor. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Tammy Murphy, the First Lady of New Jersey. I'd like to welcome you to Drumthwacket, the governor's mansion in beautiful Princeton. Located on 12 acres with over 16,000 square feet, there's a lot to see, so come on in. This is the entry hall. It was built in 1835. We welcome thousands of people here every year. In fact, we call this the People's House. From the entry hall, you can access the entire house. First, I'd like to take you into the formal dining room. This room is actually from the original house in 1835. There are two fireplaces in this room, which indicate that it really was separated into two rooms originally. There's a lot of items that are in here that are either original to the house or in the period of the house. For example, the wallpaper, which was installed in the 80s. It's actually made by Chinese artists and individual panels are actually designed for this room. We also have an incredible bowl, which is part of the silver set that was made for the USS New Jersey back in 1906 by Tiffany's. Charles Smith Olden, who originally built this room, when he was in New Orleans, he learned how to make airflow because in the 1800s, they didn't have air conditioning, of course. You'll see that there are two little doors underneath each window. And when you open those jib doors and you pull the sack, up, you can enable air to flow from front to back. So we use this room for formal dinners and for receptions, but there's a lot more to see, so come with me. This is the parlor, which was also original to the house and built in 1835. This also used to be two rooms. The area behind me was used as kind of the formal reception room, and this space back here was the family dining room. And like the dining room, this room also has two fireplaces. Moses Taylor Pine, the second owner of the home, took the wall down between the two rooms and made one, but he still did leave the ceilings at different heights, which is kind of fun. One thing you should really pay attention to throughout the house are the moldings on the ceilings. They are original, it just depends on which version of the reconstruction of the house you're looking at. So follow me, and now I'm going to show you some of the newer additions to the home, 1895 and 1910. So not surprisingly, we're in the music room, built in 1895. This room is really beautiful, as you can tell from the marble fireplace and the incredible moldings in the ceiling. And we currently have on loan a bust of George Washington from the Princeton Art Museum. One of our owners, Abram Spinell, in this particular room, he invented latex and he also invented the first spacesuit for NASA. New Jersey has a long history of innovation and that continues right up to today. So we're now in the library, which I think is the grandest room in the entire mansion. This room was built in 1910. It was added on by Moses Taylor Pine. The Pine family were really important in terms of Princeton University. There is a Pine Hall over at Princeton. We also have the same stone used here on the fireplace. Even though Pine was spelled P-Y-N-E, they liked to use the pine cone in their family crest. This was Moses Taylor Pine's favorite room. It housed all of his entire book collection. There's leaded sliders that close, so in the event that there was ever a fire, nothing else in the house would be preserved, but this room would be preserved. If you look closely, you can see that the ceiling is basically made of bookmarks. He also built in a hidden staircase, so there's all sorts of really cool features in here. Off the library is the governor's study. James Madison, when he was a student at Princeton University, actually made a candlestick table, and it's in there. So all the rooms in the mansion have access to the outdoors, so let's take a look and see. So we're out in the gardens here at Drumthwacket. Today, there's 12 acres. In the olden days, there used to be 400 acres. One of the most beautiful aspects of the gardens is actually that Moses Taylor Pine modeled everything after a villa in Italy. You've got terrace steps that go right down to the frog pond. It's really beautiful, and it's certainly representative of the garden state of New Jersey. I hope you enjoyed this peek inside the governor's mansion. We are about to undergo a tremendous renovation, so please come back and see all the great changes and make sure that you know that this is the people's house. It's your house. Stick around, coming up next, we are in Irvington, New York to check out what is definitely one of the more unique homes you will ever see. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in Irvington, New York to explore one of the most unique structures you'll ever see. This landmarked home was built in the 1860s and is reputedly the last domed octagonal residence 
in the U.S. Through the years, it fell into disrepair until owner and preservation architect Joseph Pell Lombardi lovingly returned it to its former glory. We joined him for a tour. Hello, and welcome to the Armasteiner Octagon House. I'm Joe Lombardi. I'm the restoration architect and the owner of this magnificent house. This home is filled with things you cannot see anywhere else in the world, and I'm real keen to show them to you. It all starts with the house itself. Look at this. This is the only domed, eight-sided Roman temple form house in the world. Octagon houses were fashionable on the supposition that they receive twice as much sunlight, have views into the grounds from eight directions, and contain rooms with greater accessibility to each other. In fact, one viewer at the time called it an arrested carousel. The house contains an elaborately detailed dome and veranda, amazingly festive embellishments and highly individual details. I've worked on this house for 40 years and it's been a labor of love. I've often joked that if I was someone else's architect, I would have been fired a long time ago. I have conserved the house, the grounds, and the outbuildings, and completed it with original and contemporaneous furnishings. And the insides are no less sensational. The entrance hall sets the immediate tone. It's stenciled silver leaf in a Baroque end frame. Off the entrance hall is the conservatory, the library, and the salon. The salon is traditionally considered the ladies' room. It's less severe and has more romantic type detailing. In the Renaissance tradition, the ceiling is a view of the sky, but with seagulls, and the center medallion is the type that was typical of the 19th century. On the top is one room that's the full width of the house and it's a party dance room. Not quite a ballroom in the formal sense, but more of an entertainment room with eight round windows. You can get a view of the Hudson River. There is also a spiral staircase in the dance room that leads you to an observatory. I've enjoyed sharing my labor of love with you, and I hope you have enjoyed your visit back in time at the Armasteiner Octagon House. Coming up just after the break, we head to Midtown to tour a grand penthouse with jaw-dropping views. Now, I know we say that often, but these are truly not to be missed. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back to Open House. Now we're checking out a full floor penthouse in Midtown East. This is another home that celebrates New York from up high. Dramatic walls of glass with architectural curves on both ends of the residence give the space a dynamic flow and lead to two deep balconies, one of them off a private, spacious, and luxuriously appointed master suite. Take a look. Hi, I'm Pamela Dark from Stribbling & Associates. Welcome to the penthouse at 252 East 57th Street, what I like to call a palace, but in the sky. And how palatial is this? 8,140 square feet, comprising the entire 65th floor, with six bedrooms, seven bathrooms, and amazing 360-degree views. From the entry foyer, you arrive to the 70-foot expanse with soaring ceilings and views east, west, and north. That means not only do you see both rivers, but you see Central Park in its entirety. And there's even a terrace that puts the skyline at your feet, one of two in this home. Let your imagination go wild, because this penthouse encourages it. As you move through this space, you'll notice the gentle S-curve of the windows, a brilliant architectural detail that gives you another vantage point and another exposure. And how about this corner master bedroom? It's so bright, you can sunbathe. 
The master suite has two massive dressing rooms and two luxurious baths with killer views. And again, you'll notice the beautiful S-curve of the architecture. The southern view has all the landmark buildings that make the New York City skyline so iconic. And for an alfresco experience, the second terrace is right here. This room is truly jaw-dropping. I hope you've enjoyed touring one of New York's most exquisite residences. Now you see why I call it a palace in the sky. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?